a kindergarten teacher with a five-year-old that is not diagnosed with autism. But he walks on his toes, flops to the floor, and screams and yells if he's not winning ga a game or he doesn't want to do an activity and will hit and kick you if you try to move him. I give him choices, but he would rather cause a scene. I have to move the rest of my class, 22 kids, away from him, which is difficult in a small classroom. Do you have any ideas on what I can try? And thank you very much. I'm a fan of the show. And I, and I wanna I love I wanna love on this teacher for writing in. We're getting more and more teachers writing in. And I also wanna point out what I also what I love about this is that people are starting to get it, Lauren, that behavioral uh, ABA and looking at things in a behavioral way isn't just for kids who are on the autism spectrum. We can see challenging behavior from any individual, kindergartner or a senior citizen, and behavioral techniques work. So what what can we give this teacher to help her? Yeah, well, and it's a great point. I mean, I use ABA strategies on my husband all the time. So <laughs> um, it is something that can be used across, you know, pretty much anyone. These are just at its core, this is behavior um, support, essentially. Um, so I wanted to mention, uh, you know, definitely, I, I am really proud and impressed with this teacher that's kind of going above and beyond for her students and trying to find the support. Um, there's There are not enough teachers out there that really are seeking out additional resources to, to support um, their kids. I think there's there's so many kids now that whether it's it's potentially autism or whether it's a different diagnosis or whether they don't have a diagnosis at all, there's a lot of supports that you know can potentially be put in place in, in the classroom. Um, I did want to mention also that there's a, uh, for, as far as teachers, um, the Institute for Behavioral Training, when I read this, I immediately thought, you know, Institute for Behavioral Training has an entire series that's actually dedicated to educators that has additional ideas, really out of the box solutions. So that would be a potentially great resource for this teacher or potentially other schools um, or other teachers possibly listening to this broadcast. So that's something to think about. Now, um, with this child in particular, anytime we hear of any individual that might be having a behavior of some form, um, part of my job as a BCBA is to actually really do an assessment to figure out the function of the behavior. And so the function of the behavior is, why is this behavior happening? What is this individual, what are they trying to get out of this? And so um, it's a little bit tricky based on the information here. There seems to be a lot of different functions at play. So specifically, you know, that um, this teacher mentions, you know, anytime it's a task they don't want to do, you know, they'll engage in this behavior. So that might indicate that the function is escape. Um, you also mentioned that he likes to seem, to, seems to like to do it because he likes to get the response from, from other people. That might indicate an attention function. There was also um, a mention of, of any time that things don't seem to go his way, which can allude to potentially another maybe tangible or automatic function. So there's a lot of potential functions here. And so the first thing I definitely would want to recommend is that you're working with your school staff, uh, potentially if you have an on-site BCBA, or a school psychologist that would be able to help you figure out the function. Um, sometimes a behavior can have multiple functions. Um, sometimes we have to kind of figure out what is the function that's most frequently occurring, and we kind of have to start with that one. Um, but it is important that we really look at it from a really function-based perspective. So let's say, for example, then once you know the function, let's say, for example, the function is escape. You mentioned that the child does this when they're trying to escape something. Um, they don't want to do it. So then the next thing, once we know the function, we really want to hone in on teaching that child replacement skills for that function that would meet those same needs. So say, for example, this is a child that that is engaging in these behaviors anytime you're, you're asking him, hey, we're going to go do this worksheet or we're going to do this assignment now. And then they're engaging in these challenging behaviors. Then we really need to look, if the functions escape, we need to be working on teaching this child to request for a break ahead of the time that this is the, the behaviors begin. So it may be something where the teacher has a break card that is on that child's desk and that's kind of a free, like, okay, it's a free pass. And initially it might be something that 
they miss out on assignments. But if it eliminates or reduces the challenging behavior, that's a good thing. And we can then shape it back by saying, you know, initially we need to make sure every single time that that individual uses the break card that they would be able to get out of the less preferred task. And then once that behavior is going much better and it's reduced, um, then you can start to fade maybe that reinforcement to every other time so it's more of a two to one ratio. And so this is where really working with your school um, psychologist or someone like that can help you fade that. But again, you really want to look at it from what is the function. So again, each of those other things you need to take into consideration, if it is attention or if it is tangible, we need to figure out what are we going to do to teach that child replacement skills for that? Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, this is effective for a lot of kids, is um, it doesn't mention anything about a reinforcement system in class. I know choices is a really awesome kind of what we refer to as antecedent. And so antecedent is what are we doing to prevent the occurrence of this behavior. So choices is a really, really great one. Another thing to really look at would be some sort of a token system, reinforcement system, something that really is honing in on what we want this child to do. So if we want the child to comply with instructions when we ask them to, then we need to be putting in place a, a reinforcement system that specifically targets that appropriate behavior. It needs to be something that the child's really motivated for. And I know in schools, sometimes that can be challenging, but working with the parents, a lot of parents are on board with like, okay, what, do, what can I help you know, what can I help do? Um, you know, for a lot of schools, I have multiple students in, in um, schools that they're motivated for computer time or they're motivated to be able to go into the library. There's different things that sometimes are available at school that we can pull in as that reinforcer. And so really looking at what is that child or individual motivated for and then what is the specific things that we're looking from them to um, basically get the, the good response out of that.